Coming up here on Philadelphia Eagles now, three topics that I want to hit. The Eagles just got bad news from the NFL pertaining to a Hassan Reddick trade. Where in the world is Jahan Dotson? He has given this Eagles team absolutely nothing so far. And Bill Belichick rumors are hot after another ugly loss for Philadelphia. And let's begin with topic number one, and that is the latest around Hassan Reddick. We've been talking a lot about a potential trade here on Eagles now, about whether or not Howie Roseman could bring him back because the Eagles have a lot of issues with that pass rush. But per NFL rules, a Reddick trade back to the Eagles is a no-go because the Eagles cannot reacquire him from the New York Jets. Ian Rappaport tweeting this out today that the Jets situation with Hassan Reddick still has no resolution, and some wondered if the Jets could trade him back to the Eagles. It turns out, per NFL rules, not possible. Now, we didn't know this up until this report and this tweet from Rappaport. Teams can't trade a player, then reacquire him via a trade until two years elapse. Reddick won't head back to Philadelphia. So obviously these rules, they change and differ a lot from a league like the NBA in which trades happen quite frequently. And Reddick right now, as we enter week five of the NFL season, still holding out with the New York Jets. No more guaranteed money left on the final year of his contract. And he has been a no-show with the Jets ever since his introductory press conference upon him getting dealt from Philadelphia to New York. And this report from Rappaport comes after Rich Shimini, who covers the Jets for ESPN, had reported a couple of days ago that Reddick had no problem with going back to the Eagles. He was entertaining the possibility of having an Eagles reunion. Here's what he had to say on a podcast the other day. Let's put it this way. A little birdie told me that Reddick, I don't think would be opposed to something like that, getting traded back to the Philadelphia Eagles. I think Reddick is so frustrated with the Jets situation, and of course, he did request a trade in August, so frustrated that he would not mind going back to Philadelphia. Again, I heard it from a little birdie, take it for what it's worth. I am surprised that with all of the speculation, nobody knew what the NFL rules were until Ian Rappaport was probably told by an assistant or somebody at the NFL Network, hey, a lot of people are speculating about a Reddick trade back to Philadelphia. Maybe the league office reached out to him, and they told him and relayed the news. It's not going to be able to happen because two years have to pass until a player can get traded back to the team that traded him. Reddick wants the Eagles, but do the Eagles want Reddick? Obviously, at this point, it doesn't even make sense to have this conversation, but I do think that the silence from this Eagles locker room, from this Eagles organization has been deafening. The Eagles traded him away. Nobody really voiced that they were sad that Reddick got dealt. And I think that's pretty telling for a player who grew up in Camden, went to Temple, and in his only two years with the Eagles, he had 16 sacks and 11 sacks respectively. Now, when I was at the NFL Combine, we were asking Howie Roseman about Reddick, and he said, look, local kid, Jersey, Temple. He's been a great edge rusher for us. That was really the only person who talked about Reddick in a positive light. But remember last offseason when Fletcher Cox was saying Reddick was chasing sacks. He wasn't playing within the system, not playing within the scheme that pretty much told us what we know now that a lot of people took exception with Reddick playing somewhat selfishly. Now that Reddick is off the board, what do the Eagles do? There are a lot of defensive issues to ponder, and we might just be looking at a defense that is a middle-of-the-pack unit in the NFL. I don't think they're as bad as what they were yesterday against Tampa Bay. I don't think they're as good as they showed against the New Orleans Saints, who ran a lot of 11 personnel, and that matched up favorably with Philadelphia. But if I'm Vic Fangio, if I'm Nick Sirianni, if I'm Howie Roseman, Jeffrey Lurie, and we're having a meeting going into the bye about some changes defensively that we need to make, I would bench Avante Maddox for Cooper DeGene. It's time to get the second round pick on board, and it's time to get him some playing time. I know that he missed a lot of time with that hamstring injury throughout training camp. He didn't make his professional debut until preseason game number three, but he was a dynamic, game-changing player for Iowa last year and throughout his Iowa career. 
He had seven picks. Three of them went back for touchdowns. We know that he's a threat as a punt returner, but him playing in the slot I think suits him so well because you can use him in a versatile way. Hybrid linebacker, blitzer, a coverage guy. I want to see what the Swiss Army Knife and DeGene can do. I've already seen enough from Avante Maddox. He has been so bad to start this year. He's barely making any money. It's not a huge deal. Him as a backup, okay. Can't start for this team anymore out of the slot. The Eagles also need some juice on the defensive side of the football. You have to get Devin White on the field. The report from Jeff McClain, the Eagles don't trust him to run this defense or be a part of this defense. N'Kobe Dean led the Eagles with missed tackles yesterday. And I think that N'Kobe Dean is an instinctual player, but as far as athleticism, adding a punch, swagger, physicality, speed to this defense, nobody on the defensive side of the football can do what Devin White can do when he's engaged in playing well. Get him on the field, at least see what he can do, please. Can't trade for Hassan Reddick any longer. That boat has sailed. That ship has sailed. Stop playing Bryce off as an outside linebacker. Brian Baldinger pointed this out in a Baldy's breakdown on Monday morning. That all of Bryce Huff's sacks last year came in a four-point stance. Two feet down, two hands down, rushing the quarterback, being able to get that jump. Vic Fangio has him playing in a two-point stance, a stand-up outside linebacker. It's not what he does. And when you give a player $34 million in guaranteed money, you have to tap into his strengths what he does well, and maximize the player. Eagles aren't doing that with Bryce Huff right now. And then, do you think about going with Keely Ringo over Darius Slay, whose Twitter firestorm on Sunday, he gets cooked, yet he tweets out his resume. It's ridiculous, and he's been up and down to start the year. Keely Ringo, I think he has a lot of potential in this league. He's also still very young. I think he's only 22 years old, and... He has speed. He has physicality. I thought he played well at the end of last year. And how about how, dy how dynamic he was, excuse me, with that blocked PAT yesterday, taking that to the crib. Now, part of the Eagles' pass rush and the problems there comes down to teams negating the pass rush by getting the ball out quickly. Kirk Cousins did this. We talked about it in the lead-up to that game. Baker Mayfield did it yesterday. A couple of different databases with the average seconds to throw. But the one that we have access to, Baker Mayfield averaged 1.95 seconds to throw yesterday in week four. That is the fastest in any NFL game this season. So that doesn't allow the Eagles pass rush to even get any momentum and doesn't allow it to get going. But there's a problem with the Eagles coverage when quarterbacks are getting rid of the football very fast. And it's time for Vic Fangio to adjust the Eagles have had no cornerbacks in press on 88% of their snaps. Highest in the NFL. Doesn't fly for today's era of offensive football and defensive football. Think about it. If you're Baker Mayfield, if you're the Bucks, if you're a quarterback taking on this Eagles team and you see all the corners 8 to 10 yards off, as part of your game planning, why wouldn't you? Get rid of the ball quickly, especially if Philadelphia is known to be a poor tackling team. They missed 15 tackles against the Buccaneers on Sunday. So take what the defense has given you. The old adage, get rid of that football quickly, force them to tackle you. They're playing off. That's an easy at least five yards right there. So Vic Fangio going into the bye has to make a multitude of adjustments. Before we continue to move forward on today's show, we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. We're at 86,029 right now, which means we are 13,971 people away from getting that silver plaque from YouTube. If you want Eagles shows every single day from yours truly, grew up in the Philly area, lifelong Eagles fam, hit that sub button. Next up on the show, where is Jahan Dotson? The Eagles gave up a third round pick for Jahan Dotson, and he's given this team nothing. And I get it to start the year. It was a late trade, late trade acquisition. He had to get caught up to speed with this Eagles offense. But did Howie Roseman get fleeced? Because Dotson has been given this team a Bryce off stat line, a big old goose egg. He played 49 snaps against the Buccaneers on Sunday. That was 86% of the snaps offensively. That led all Eagles wide receivers, yet he had one catch. And this year, Nine targets, five catches, 25 yards. I will say I went back and looked at the tape, and Dotson was running good routes. There were opportunities for Jalen Hurts to get him the football, but Jalen Hurts, for whatever reason, is hesitant when he doesn't fully trust a wide receiver. 
And because of that, he's not throwing the ball Dotson's way. But Dotson also has to be better. This is on Dotson. This is on Hurts. This is on Kellen Moore to get him involved. Now, obviously, with Philadelphia right now, when they're healthy, you have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, Saquon Barkley. Those four weapons take precedent in the offense over Dotson. But you look at what Alameda Zacchaeus is doing, and he was this team's number three wide receiver last year. And with this red-hot Washington offense, led, led by Jaden Daniels, who's completing 82% of his passes, leading the NFL, Zacchaeus has 12 targets, 10 catches, and 114 yards. And how about this analytical stat from Bo Wolf, who covers the Eagles for PHLY? Over the past 10 seasons, 679 wide receivers ran at least 100 routes in their team's first four games. Jahan Dotson's .19 yards per route run ranks him 678th, just edging the 2017 Brashad Perriman. Dotson at Penn State, I covered him at my previous job. He's a good route runner. He has good hands. He's a 4-4 guy, yet his yards per route run are .19? So again, that's part of the offensive design, play calling, Kellen Moore, but Jalen Hurts has to look his way, and hopefully Dotson can get involved because it makes this offense much more multifaceted. Let's round out with this. The Bill Belichick Eagles rumors are hot on the streets after another Eagles loss, this time at the hands of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Buccaneers continue to own Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts. The Eagles went down to Tampa. It was hot, and they got smacked. And now a lot of Eagles fans are clamoring for Philadelphia to fire Nick Sirianni and hire Bill Belichick, who's arguably the best coach in the history of football. There are Belichick and Eagles ties. First of all, Belichick is really close and really respects Eagles general manager Howie Roseman. He's been on the record with saying that multiple times. Eagles owner Jeffrey Lurie is from Boston. That's where he grew up. And before he bought the Eagles, he was looking at buying the New England Patriots back in the 1990s. And after last year, when the Eagles lost 6 of 7 to end the 2023 season, According to reports in Boston, according to reports nationally, some local buzz, the Eagles did entertain hiring Bill Belichick, but they elected, as we know, to bring back Nick Sirianni. My thoughts on the Eagles hiring Bill Belichick? He's arguably the best coach in the history of the National Football League. His media interviews have been riveting, whether it be on the Manning cast, or on the Pat McAfee show, or inside the NFL. Bill Belichick has an encyclopedia for a brain when it comes to the history of football. And his dad, who was a coach at Navy way back in the day, decades and decades ago, pretty much wrote the book of football scouting. And I think when you listen to Belichick and the passion that he exudes for the game of football, he clearly still wants to coach. And that's why he was a finalist for the Atlanta Falcons job. That's why he was taking interviews or other teams had interest in him after he was let go by New England after a dynastic run. With Bill Belichick, you know that he would turn around this Eagles defense, which over the last couple of years has been a really porous unit. And to start this year in 2024, they're one of the worst units in the National Football League. And last year with New England, the offense may have been awful for the Patriots. The defense, though, was still a top 10 unit. So the offense, anemic, the defense was still elite. And he's one of the finer defensive minds that we've ever seen on an NFL sideline. My worry with Bill Belichick, it's inevitable that he would bring in Josh McDaniels as his offensive coordinator. He would probably bring in Matt Patricia on his staff. And by the way, him and Patricia are doing a podcast right now. It's actually a pretty good listen. But when I think about a McDaniels offense, yuck. When I think about Jalen Hurts being in that Josh McDaniels scheme, I don't think it would work, and I don't think Jalen Hurts would be a scheme fit. McDaniels has had a lot of success as an offensive coordinator in this league. Obviously, for a long time with Tom Brady, who's the greatest quarterback of all time, I will give McDaniels credit because he brought the best out of Mac Jones, who in his rookie year actually played pretty well before his career went in a downward spiral. So if Nick Sirianni doesn't get this turned around, the Bill Belichick to the Eagles rumors are going to pick up momentum, 
And I don't think Philadelphia is going to be the only team vying for his services inside the NFC East because the Giants could be looking at Belichick as a coaching option and the Dallas Cowboys could as well. So if Nick Sirianni gets fired, should the Eagles hire Bill Belichick? H for hire, O for other. Let's round out the show with that poll question. Let me know. And as always, thanks for supporting the program. Thank you.